Good morning. Welcome back. And I wish every Chinese person listening and watching this uh, lesson a blessed Chinese New Year. Well, it's uh, been a bit muted and quiet uh, compared to previous years, but uh, it is for a good cause. And we pray that this COVID crisis will end soon. So now we are back at chapter 5 of the book of Luke. And we are still in the ministry of the perfect person. If you uh, remember the headlines or the outline I gave to you earlier, uh, in chapters 4 to 21, we have the ministry of the perfect man. So we are now at chapter 5. Now, in this chapter 5, in this... Yes, we look at the difference that Jesus made to four individuals. And the same principles, the, the same that Jesus will make in the lives of each and every one of us. So we have, in this chapter, Peter, from verse 1 to 11, from failure to success. That was the impact Jesus had upon his life. And then we have the leper who had leprosy and it was from sickness to health. And then we have the paralytic, paralyzed person from guilt to forgiveness. And finally, Levi, from the old to the new. And here we see as Jesus ministered, he also cared for the individual and he reached out to the individual. And in the first 11 verses, uh, which I just mentioned about Peter, I had preached this sermon uh, some time back in the church. It is launching out into the deep. And here we find Peter and his fellow fishermen on the shore and they were washing their nets, their empty nets because they had toiled all night and caught nothing. And here comes Jesus and he is going to make a big difference in Peter's life. So Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We pray that this morning as we cover this chapter, we pray that you will guide us, you will instruct us, you will teach us in your word, your truth. Grant us knowledge that you will also make a big difference in our lives today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's look at verse 1. Chapter 5 of the book of Luke. So it was as the multitudes pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets then he got into one of the boats which was Simon's and asked him if uh, asked him to put out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So, here it was, uh, we saw the multitude, they were so eager to listen to the word of God. And this verse is wonderful. It's just so wonderful. I mean, do you see much of this today where people just crowd and they will just press into the church? They want to come into the presence of God in the church and to hear the word of God. Unlikely. But it was, it was in that day when Jesus was by the lake of Gennesaret. They pressed about him. Oh, what a great verse. They pressed about him to hear. To hear the word. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. This is the Sea of Galilee. And 
This sea is about 700 feet below sea level. And that was the area where Jesus ministered a lot. And this, this lake is a fresh water lake. And he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them. So where were they? Where were they? And they were washing their nets. But if you read all the way to verse 5, and in verse 5, Simon did tell the master, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. So if they had caught nothing, why did they need to wash their nets? They needed to wash their nets because the, the fish oil has got some residual smell. And if they do not wash away, the next time they cast the net into the sea, the fish can smell the net and they will avoid the net. But also cleaning the net on, the, on a regular basis uh, will keep the net longer. That means it can last longer. That is maintenance. It was routine. And though they caught no fish, they came together and they wash their nets. And you see here, the fishermen do not work alone. They help each other, they work together. The fishermen had gone from them and were washing their empty nets. Verse 3, Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. I mean, there were a few boats, I'm sure, but Jesus chose Simon's boat because he had a lesson. He had something for Peter. Peter, also Simon. So which was Simon's. And asked him to put out a little from the land. Just push the boat out a little from the land because the multitudes were pressing against him. So he needed a bit more space. And so the best thing is to get onto a boat and told Peter to push it out. And you know, even as Peter pushed it out, and Peter was in the water, and Peter was holding the boat to keep it stable, but that also meant that Peter was, was an attentive audience because he couldn't go anywhere. So even as he was holding the boat, he had his years to the Lord and he had to listen. So, and ask him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So if you look at this picture, just a picture, but it gives you uh, the scenario, I mean the, the, scene, the, the scene where Jesus was on the boat and uh, he was teaching the people sitting on the shore. Now, and the multitudes from the shoreline to the back, they could hear the voice of Jesus. And in those days, without technology, how could they hear? How was the sound amplified? It could, because Jesus, the Elohim, the Creator, he, he knew about nature. And one thing we know, you know, hot air rises, right? Hot air rises. And so even as Jesus spoke, there were sound waves. And the hot air brought up the sound waves. And even as they bounced off the water, they, they, they were rising. And then there is a breeze, and the breeze will blow, blow inland from the lake, inland, and unto the people and up the slope. So even as the sound waves were raised, the wind, the breeze from the lake blew inland, it blew the sound waves towards land, towards the land and upwards, so that the people, even at the back, could hear. And we have tested this, we have tried this, even when we went to Israel, uh, when, when we had someone up on the slope and someone on the shore and, and he could just speak and the sound travel 
and that was how it was. If you look at this diagram, a simple diagram, you would be able to see that uh, the sound waves from here, the sound waves from here rose up and it was blown inland. And the people were there and they could hear the sound waves coming to them audibly. So, he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. What is the lesson here? What is the lesson here? Even as Jesus used the lake as a natural uh, microphone. The lesson here is every pulpit is a fishing boat. Every pulpit is a fishing boat. And Jesus used the fishing boat to preach and to catch fish. He used that to catch fish, fishes of men, to catch souls. So we too must use the pulpit as a fishing boat to preach and to catch fish. Verse 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let your nets let down your nets for a catch. Peter had been standing just by the boat, holding on to the boat, and that was shallow. And when Jesus had done speaking, he told Simon, Now, launch out, push the boat into the deeper water. So from shallow water to deeper water, which is a bit more choppy, and let down your nets. So when Jesus was speaking, he was fishing for men. And now he told people, the Peter, to launch the boat into the deeper waters to fish for fish and let down your nets. You know, those nets are called drag nets. They are big. And when they are out in the sea, they would cast the net and the net would fall into the sea and then they would drag the net to shore or drag the net into the boat with the catch. And... Staying in the shallow water, it is safe, it is comfortable, but Jesus was telling him, launch out deeper, launch out deeper, don't stay in the shallow water. So, verse 5, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Simon, Simon was an experienced fisherman. He knew the lake, he knew the waters, he, he knew about the, the fish, their habits, and, and when is the best time to fish. And how much can this carpenter teach me? I know a lot more about fishing because fishing for the fishermen at the Sea of Galilee, they were, it was done at night because it was the best time to fish at night. And what they do is they bring a torch and, they, and as the boat goes out into the, the lake, the, the light will illuminate the area and the fish will come around. And that's when they will throw the net down and bring in the catch but they do not fish in the morning they do not fish in the day that is not the best time to do fishing but here you have a carpenter telling him to do to do so and not only fishing is best done in the night but in the shallow water but here it was doing it in the deeper water and in the day so he said master which is a recognition of Jesus' authority or rabbi. It is acknowledgement of him, the master. We have toyed all night and caught nothing. And you know, some people have gone through life in their walk with Christ and they have not caught a fish. They have not caught a soul. Prayerfully, it will change after this lesson. We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, 
So in faith and in obedience to the word of Jesus, nevertheless, though your word doesn't make sense, but nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So it sounds like it does not come from a man full of faith. But since Jesus, you say so, I will bring down the net. And that is this. That's, that's how it is for some of us. I mean, we do not have full grasp of the matter, may, may not be full of faith, but we obey nonetheless. And it's good. So, verse 6. And when they had done this, so when they had obeyed the word of God, the word of Jesus, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Of course, Jesus knew it so because he is the Lord of the sea, just as he is the Lord of the harvest. He is the Lord of all. He knows. And when they obeyed his word, there was a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Just a few hours earlier, they caught nothing. Now their net was breaking. And you know what? The multitude who were on the beach, on the shore, they were watching. And I'm sure it impacted them. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Why? Because you can't do fishing alone. We can't do fishing alone. We fish for men, but we can't do it alone. We need teamwork. And that's when Peter called the rest to come. And so they signal to their partners in the other boat. You can guess that James and John are probably in the other boat to come and help them to share. We, we are to be channels of blessing. We are not just to hold on to the blessings ourselves, but to share with others. And so Peter did. Got James and others to come alongside with them. And even as they did so, it wasn't enough because it was too much. So they began to sing. Because as they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sing. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Here, can you imagine, Peter, historically, it is believed that he was a giant of a man. He wasn't a small, pine-sized person, but he was a giant. He was big frame. And he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. In the presence of God, in the presence of Christ, he felt so unworthy, sinful, that he should even be blessed with so much and with the little faith that he had. But also, he is quite unlike a proud man. A proud man would stand up and proclaim, I did it my way. You know, I caught the fish. I threw down the net and I brought in not just some, but a lot, more than enough. And the boats began to sink. I did it. But not Simon. He recognized who is the provider, who is the miracle worker, who is the Lord. And he responded in worship. He fell down at Jesus knees and said, Depart from me, for I am undeserving. I am a sinful man. But you know, this is grace. It's not that we have earned it, not that we deserve it, but Jesus gave it to him as he gives it to us. Grace. Verse 9. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. These people were all amazed. I mean, look at the picture. It's just a lot. They can keep some for themselves. They can sell, I'm sure. 
and it would be profitable. They just had the best catch in their business. They were really doing well with this miraculous catch. They were astonished at the catch at this time of the day in that part of the sea. And so not only them, but also James and John, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus wasn't done with them. That was just to show them a miracle, just to demonstrate a miracle. Now Jesus made the call to prove to them that he is the Lord, he is the Messiah, and he got greater things for them. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. From now on, you will catch men. Imagine if you were Peter and you, were, you, 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 you still have not recovered from this miracle and you were kneeling down at the knees of Jesus. And then Jesus said, From now on, you will catch men. Eh? Why? You, you have blessed me with fish. Can you bless me so that I can achieve this quantity every day? I can, can, can be just as successful every day. But why are you telling me to catch men? So, this was what Jesus said to him. From now on, you will catch men. And he went on to be the evangelist. He went on to be the first preacher of the church. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 41. In Acts chapter 2, verse 41, what did we see? After Peter preached, Peter preached the first sermon, and after he preached the first sermon, verse 41, then those who gladly received his word, Peter's word, were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 souls. I've done ministry for many years, but I've not yet had 3,000 souls on one occasion saved. But that's what Peter had. God bless him in his ministry. So, this is what Jesus had said to him in Luke chapter 5, verse 10. From now on, you will catch men. Verse 11, And when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. They gave up everything. They gave up their business and they followed Jesus. They gave up their nets, their boats and followed Jesus. But you know what's the irony? This was the most fish they have caught in their entire lives. They probably had not caught so many fish before. And just when their business was doing well, Jesus said, come follow me. And they did. And they did. They went they left the, the boats, they left the sea, and they went on shore and followed Jesus. They did not go and expand their business, set up a chain and, and, and uh, many more, buy many more boats, but not them. They followed Jesus. So, but was this the final time that they fish? No. I just brought to screen John chapter 21, verse 3. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. When was this? This was after Jesus was crucified. After Jesus was crucified, the, the disciples were scattered when Jesus was arrested. Then they went back to fishing. I mean, when they scattered, they were in fear. And now they seem a bit lost because their Lord Jesus was not with them. So what is the next thing they could do? They went fishing. And so Simon Peter in John 21 said, I am going fishing. So you see in our flesh, we are not perfect. Though we say, yes, Lord Jesus, we follow you all the way. And in Luke chapter 5, they forsook everything to take up full-time ministry with Jesus. But after he was crucified, Simon and his fellow brethren went back fishing. But it's okay. God's grace and mercy about. 
And in the book of Acts, God used him. And they gathered in chapter 1 and then they move on from there. The power of the Holy Spirit came upon them and then they were mobilized and did great wonders for the Lord. So back to verse 11 of chapter 5. So they had brought their boats to land. They forsook all and followed Jesus. So what did we learn in summary from this uh, episode of Peter at the lake holding the boat and going out into the sea and casting his nets? So he was a failure because he caught nothing all night. And that is quite um, sad for a fisherman because he got no catch and he got no he would not be able to make any sale so but from failure he ended up successfully so three points Jesus called his disciples to live dangerously though so don't just uh, be lethargic and be comfortable in the shallow waters go launch out into the deep the sea may be choppy things may be a bit challenging but that's where you will find a bigger catch. Obedience is key to success. Peter could have rejected Jesus' su suggestion because Jesus was only a carpenter. Peter was the experienced fisherman. But he obeyed the word of God. And he was successful. Jesus was no man's debtor and is no man's debtor. That means you cannot outgive God. You cannot. And Jesus gave him more than he expected. In fact, I don't think Peter expected anything because he toiled all night and he caught nothing. But lesson here is, if you let him have your boat, he will fill it with fish. If you let Jesus have your boat, he will fill it with fish. So, we now move on to the second person. And that is the leper. And here we read from verse 12. This leper was inflicted with leprosy and full of leprosy. And that's what, that's what Luke recorded for us. And it happened, verse 12, Luke chapter 5, And it happened when he was in a certain city, that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And who could have described this? Full of leprosy. But Dr. Liu, he's a doctor. He can be a bit more descriptive. And he mentioned full of leprosy. Now, leprosy those days was uh, uh, any eruptive skin disease, something that erupts from the skin. And um, usually in those days, uh, there is no cure and so all these people are ostracized put outside the city because it can be infectious now leprosy first starts beneath the skin and so it is an inward disease under the skin and is quiet in there but slowly it will burst out of the skin then it becomes an outward disease and you can see the sores and and the and the, and, and the open wounds and so on. Then, when it gets, it spreads, and then when it gets worse, you will find it is quite destructive, a disease because uh, the 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 parts of the body will just drop off the digits, the arm and 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 the eye or whatever you know things will just drop off the body. And because it is of this nature and it can be infectious, these people are separated from the community. They are deemed to be ceremonially unclean. They cannot come into the temple or, or the tabernacle to worship. They are outside the city and, and they cannot come close to any human. And if they are within sight, within distance, they are to shout leper, leper, so that others are warned of the presence of a leper. And they stay away and these lepers are away from community worst of all they are away from their families and they have not had anyone touch them or embrace them just just they are just isolated so sad so you have 
first an inward disease and then it becomes an outward disease then it becomes a separating disease separated from community and this is a picture of sin first it starts on the inside because out of the heart the mouth speaketh out of the heart many unclean and unrighteous things come forth so it starts as an inward disease picture of sin then it comes forth and you know the wages of sin is death and eventually eventually an unrepentant person will be separated from the family of god and so this is such a person who we see before us and it happened when he was in a certain city that behold a man who was full of leprosy saw jesus this person needed to be changed he needed to be changed to a non-leper to be a normal person that's what he needed and you notice the next thing is he wanted to be changed he desired to be changed and he came to jesus some people knew they know they're sick but they don't want to go and see the doctor but this person knew he was sick and he wanted to be well and he came he broke the law why because he wasn't supposed to come into the community but jesus in jesus he saw hope he saw healing and he broke the law and he came to jesus and in reverence the people who are able-bodied in the presence of jesus they may not be reverent but this person who was unwell came to jesus and in reverence let's read so a man who was full of leprosy saw jesus and he fell on his face and implored him saying lord if you are willing you can make me clean so he came on his own accord there wasn't any usher there wasn't someone who dragged him there but he came on his own because he recognized his need he wanted to be changed and he fell on his face and he beseeched the lord he implored implored the lord he should be staying away because he is unclean but he came and implored him and he said lord lord if you are willing you can make me clean does it sound like he was commanding the lord does he sound like he's telling the lord instructing the lord no it was a humble request if you are willing lord if you are willing you can make me clean so the ability of jesus is not the question you can but it is his willingness whether jesus was willing to heal this man and that was a humble request and it's a good lesson for us because too often we have all these faith preachers and and declarers and, and professors and as if jesus or god is the waiter waiter waiting upon our commands and this command jesus this command jesus to do that command god to do this i think we can learn lord if you are willing you can make me whole your will be done then he put out his hand that is jesus then jesus put out his hand and touched him i guess everyone who was standing around said wow wow what is he doing he should not be touching the leper he, that leper will make jesus unclean but you know jesus was not made unclean in fact jesus made the leper clean that is the difference so jesus was willing to do what the community would not do jesus reached out to the rejected and he put out his hand and touched him so likewise we must reach out to those who have been rejected and touch them and once more jesus said i am willing be cleansed i am willing jesus is willing be cleansed it's such a simple command 
Jesus has made you clean. Jesus has made me clean. And Jesus can make others clean too. We just need to go forth and reach out and touch the rejected. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he charged him to tell no one. But go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. Now, Throughout history, up to that point in time when Jesus was ministering to this leper, no leper has ever been healed. They are put out of the community, they are thrown outside, the, they live outside the city gates, and they probably live in that condition till they die. And the law, the law did however provide for uh, a return to community. And how so? If you are healed, and the law did not say how you are healed, but if you are healed, can you can go and show yourself as a testimony to the priest. And if he checks your body, like as if he's a doctor, and if he checks that indeed there are no more scabs, no more of this uh, uh, wounds, open sores, and so on, uh, white spots on your body and you are normal he can then declare you normal and you are back into the community and you can find this even in Leviticus chapter 13 you can read it from verse 1 to 3 so let me just quickly read this for you uh, and the Lord spoke to Moses in Leviticus 13 verse 1 And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying When a man has on the skin of his body swelling A scab or a bright spot And it becomes on the skin of his body like a leprous sore Then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest Or to one of his sons the priest The priest shall examine the sore on the skin of the body And if the hair on the saw has turned white, the saw appears to be deeper than the skin of his body. It is a leprous saw. Then the priest, priest shall examine him and pronounce him unclean. So, this is the initial stage and if unclean, he will be uh, evicted to the outskirts, I mean to outside the city gates. But when he is well, he is to show himself to the priest and he, he can then be welcomed back to the community. Okay, So you see here, verse 46, He shall be unclean all the days he has a saw, he shall be unclean, he is unclean and he shall dwell alone, his dwelling shall be outside the camp and so jesus said now go go for confirmation go and testify and show to the priest that you your situation has reversed and then you can be welcomed back into the community now if you were the priest and, and this guy comes along and say hey priest look at me i'm healed you know something the priest would be shocked because no one in his ministry, in, his, in all his ministry, he has not seen a leper being healed. So, if you were the priest, what you have just seen, you have just seen the business calling card of Jesus Christ. You understand? Because if I'm the priest and I'm doing all the ministry in, in, in the temple, and, uh, and one of my duties including... Uh, confirming if a person has leprosy or not and if he has I send him outside the city but here comes a person and he is totally healed totally reversed he is now with baby skin he is healed but my question is who healed you because in the history of the temple and and in Israel, no one has been healed. So who will heal you? The person who heal you must have got supernatural power. He is the Lord. He is 
the Savior. He is Jesus Christ. He is the promised Messiah. So Jesus has just served notice through this former leper to the priests and also others in the temple that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, has come. But go show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. You can also read this, not only Leviticus chapter 13, which I just pointed a few verses to you. You can read all the way to Leviticus chapter 14, the whole process. So what is the lesson for us? We look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2, let me read from verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We are all sinners. We have the nature of Adam. And God is saying even to Paul in his writing to Timothy, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God who desire, God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So he doesn't want us to be in our sin. He doesn't want us to be leprous, but to be delivered and to be saved. One more, Second Peter chapter two, verse th chapter three, verse nine. Okay, the Lord is not Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us not willing why am i stressing this because just now jesus said i am willing i am willing so in first timothy we read about his willingness and so because god desires that all be saved and now in second peter chapter 10 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering toward us not willing that we should perish but all should come to repentance. So God is willing for us to come to life, come to, re to repentance. That is Jesus. I am willing. So now we go on to verse 15. However, Jesus told the, the, the man, the leper, the former leper, tell no one. Why? Because they are curious onlookers. There are people who just come for the healing but not for the word. But Jesus' primary ministry is the word. He need to preach the gospel. He need to tell the good news. So he doesn't want to be, to be locked down uh, by people just for healing. And of course, in this midst, there are, there are opposition. There are enemies like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. So... He needed to go about doing his core ministry, which is preaching the word. So don't, don't tell anyone. However, this enthusiastic weakness did not obey. The report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Of course, when they come to Jesus with their infirmities, Jesus is always full of compassion. He will still heal them. You know, the irony, as I mentioned before, in those days, Jesus told them, tell no one, and they went to tell everyone. After Jesus was resurrected, before he left, he told the disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, now go tell everyone. Include, and that includes us, you know, but we are not telling everyone we tell no one for some of us so the situation needs to be corrected we need to go and tell everyone so i need you to observe another thing in verse 15 great multitudes came together to hear and be healed to hear and be healed 
So which comes first? To hear and then be healed. To hear. So the hearing of the word of God, the hearing of the word of God brings faith and then to be healed. But some people conduct their ministry by doing, focusing on the healing part because you draw a lot of crowd and then the word is relegated to a smaller portion of time. In some instances, nothing at all. But let's follow the example of Jesus. Let the word go forth first and then the healing. They came to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmity. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Jesus wasn't looking for crowds, but some ministers today, they, they want a stadium full of people. They want the hall to be full. They're always looking for crowd. If the crowd is too small, they, 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 they are not so pleased. They might cancel the meeting. But Jesus wasn't looking for crowds. In every opportunity, he would still minister to each and every individual. But he also needed time to rest and to pray. And this was when he withdrew to recharge his battery. He withdrew into the wilderness so that the crowd would not be there. And he often, with the original word, often withdrew. It meant that it was a regular thing that he did. He withdrew into the wilderness and pray despite you know increasing crowd and, and and increasing demands upon his ministry he found time to pray so must we lest we get burnt out we need to recharge our battery so that is the second so that is the second um, person whom Jesus ministered to even in this chapter so we take a pause here and we will come back and finish with the other two uh, persons whom jesus ministered to in this chapter <laughs> 